This is a presentation of a STED, or a Stanford Earthquake Data Set, which is a global data set of labeled seismic data for AI application. Over the past few years, there have been a sharp increase in the number of machine learning applications and earthquake seismologies that you might have seen. Most of these works and their impressive performance compared with the standard algorithm. But what was the main reason behind this, their success? Most of the machine learning algorithm and even the core concept of deep learning have been around for a few decades. What have changed in the past several years is uh, leading to those uh, initial, actually, seismological studies. It was that we got better solution for some of the technical issues, and more importantly, we got more efficient computational tools plus some large data sets with high quality labels. I said these two factors played a more important role because most of these improvements were achieved empirically using the standard benchmark data sets. Supervised learning is a machine or supervised deep learning actually is a machines that a machine that needs tons of data as its fuel to produce a good models. And here, both quality and quantity matter. In earthquake seismology, we have large catalogs resulted from years of works of analysts manually peaking arrival times of different seismic phases and characterizing earthquake sources based on these information. And on the other hand, we have massive archives of seismic waveforms. At the beginning, uh, this seems relatively fairly uh, straightforward and easy to make a data set of machine learning. All we need here seems to be just matching these three labels with the waveforms. However, in practice, there are all sorts of complications that you may not expect at the beginning. For instance, sometimes because of errors in timing or catalogs, you might not find events that you are looking for on the waveform based on a catalog information. On the other hand, you can find many other earthquake that you did not expect them. And moreover, hand picks parameters like arrival times do not mean that they are always 100% accurate. And after all, our catalogs are complete to a certain magnitude and many more of smaller earthquake exist in continuous waveforms that can introduce significant errors into our labeling. So, you have to come up with a kind of QC mechanism to identify each of these cases and account for them during developments of a labeled data set that makes the process a bit more challenging than what it might look like at the beginning. With this introduction on some of the existing challenges, now let's see how a set has been built. With first, built a relational database of metadata based on multiple resources. These metadata mainly include information about the recording station, recording earthquake, and some of the hand picks parameters such as P and S wave variables. Then based on these metadata, we define different classes and categories of data set. And then based on these data sets, we obtain event waveform for each category from the archive. And then we first perform some pre-processing on the waveform to make them uniform. And then we use different techniques, including deep learning, to check the quality of some of these labels provided by the catalogs and identify problematic cases like those that I showed you in the previous slide. This helped us to reduce the errors by excluding problematic waveforms. We estimated that the remaining errors in the final uh, data set caused by uh, those sources are less than 1% of the whole data. 
For the other labels, like a, like earthquake location, estimated magnitude, that is hard to check the quality we provided the estimated errors whenever they were reported by all resources. And then in the last step, we calculated and added some new additional labels uh, as listed here. So this is the data set. It consists of two classes of earthquake and non earthquake signals. Currently, the earthquake class has only one category, local earthquake, including more than 1 million three component waveforms. And the non earthquake classes now actually contained uh, about 350,000 examples of variety of uh, natural and non-natural uh, noises. These are two samples from each category. Uh, three component waveforms, each one minute line waveforms are provided as NumPy array. They are, there are 35 labels or attributes associated with each earthquake samples uh, each earthquake samples and eight associated with each uh, basically noise samples. Uh, the structure of the data set has been designed in a compact form. So the total uh, data set is around 80 gigabytes. So you can easily uh, select a portion of the data set based on these criteria. Uh, one set of these attributes are related to the earthquake source, like the earthquake location, magnitudes, type of magnitudes, if available, focal mechanism, and errors in the location and origin time estimation. The second groups of attributes are related to the receivers or the recording stations, such as their absolute geographic location, the relative location to the source, and the instrument type. And the remaining attributes are related to the waveforms, such as P and S wave arrival time, how these uh, arrival times have been peaked, a rough estimation of the end of the coda, and the signal to noise ratio for each component. But what you can do with this data, you can use it to build your models for several tasks like these ones and beyond these. Uh, these are two recent, uh, uh, two actually studies that use these data sets, uh, or you can use it for a benchmark as a benchmark uh, data set to test and compare existing models. So this is the current data set. Uh, we plan to expand this data set in the future. And this is the rough plan. We welcome any recommendations, suggestion, or contribution. So I leave here uh, with this last slide. Thank you so much.